When it comes to RPG Maker MV's sprite system, I have mixed opinions. On one hand, it's so simple that it significantly reduces the workload, which is a definite plus. On the other hand, this system is very limiting. Just look at Harold, the hero of countless legends and unfinished projects with his short legs and only three animation frames. He's not suited for a side-scroller game at all. Think about it. When your character is idle, they should have a subtle animation, like breathing. And when they run, you want to feel the weight and speed in their movements. These different animations not only make your character more visually appealing, but also help immerse players in the world you're creating. But how do you make character like this in RPG Maker MV? Let's find out. Good evening, detectives. Side here. Grab a seat and take a sip of your coffee, because today we're diving into some important stuff. Character animation, character frame, and horizontal fixed direction. Three essential plugins to bring your characters to life with more realistic and dynamic animations. Stick with me as we transform Harold into Harold 2. Before we dive in, Let's take a closer look at a default sprite sheet to understand its structure. The default sprite sheet contains eight different characters, each with three animation frames for each of the four directions. This makes the default sprite sheet 12 sprites wide and eight sprites high. Now that we've got a handle on the default sprite sheet, let's explore how we can enhance its capabilities. First, activate the Character Animation plugin. You'll notice a big difference right away. The character's sprite sheet is managed completely differently. Thanks to Galv's plugin, the slots used by the different characters are repurposed for the movement of a single character. The first slot is for idle animations, the second for walking, the third for running, and if you're using the Jump Action plugin, the fourth is reserved for jumping. Since we're focusing on a side-scroller, we can ignore the up and down directions. Because the fixed direction horizontal plug-in keeps the character locked in the side directions even when the up and down keys are pressed. So there you have it. We'll start by setting the dimensions of a single sprite and deciding how many frames per animation to draw. For this project, I'll use the basic side-scroller template, which you can download from the archive on my itch page. As an example, I will use this sprite that I downloaded online, but you are free to create your own character from scratch. To ensure we draw the character in the correct proportions, use an existing game map or a map divided into tiles as a reference. At this stage, the character doesn't need to be finalized, just a simple sketch to understand how much space it will occupy on the map. Once you're satisfied with the draft, trim the extra space around the character. Remember to center it on the bottom edge of the frame and leave some room on the sides for future animations that might need it. Herald 2.0 will have six animation frames. I'll animate him in one direction and then mirror it for the other. Keep in mind that with the Character Animation plugin active, the animation frame sequence is 1, 2, 3, etc. in a loop. This means the last frame must connect smoothly to the first to create a seamless loop. Let's recap. We've figured out the structure of a Herald 2.0 style sprite sheet and created the animation sprites. Now we need to calculate the final size of the sprite sheet. The width equals the width of a single sprite times the number of frames times 4, and the height is 8 times the height of a single sprite. At this point, you could go back to your drawing program and input the sizes you calculated to assemble your sprite sheet. But there's an easier way. To streamline the next step, I've created a simple program that generates a custom grid PNG 
a quick way to position the sprites on the sprite sheet. Just enter the dimensions of your sprite and the number of frames per animation. If it's what you're looking for, click download to save the image. Now we'll return to the drawing program to assemble the sprites into our final sprite sheet. Think of the grid as a puzzle, with each cell representing a space to fill with a sprite. When all the sprites are in place, export it as a PNG without a background. And remember these key points when naming the file. If your animation has more than the default three frames, include this text at the end of the file name, where the number indicates the number of frames per animation. Add an exclamation point. This ensures your character walks exactly at the base of the tile. Add a dollar sign if your sprite has different dimensions from the standard one. Without these symbols, the character won't display correctly, so be sure to include them if needed. Place the sprite sheet in the Images, Characters folder of your project. Open the database in the RPG Maker Editor, go to the Actors section, and select your hero from the list. Make sure to activate the Character Animation, Character Frame, and Fixed Direction Horizontal Plugins. Start the game in test mode to ensure the animations work correctly in both directions. This is the moment of truth to see if everything we've worked on so far, it works as expected. If everything is fine, then you did it. Nice job, detective. And that's it for today. If you want to level up your character, don't miss the video linked in the description. It's got some solid tips you'll definitely want to check out. Also, join our Discord server to stay updated and get help from our awesome community. All right, time to put those detective hats back on. Take care, game devs, and see you soon in the next side tutorial.